How's it going guys, Jacob here. Today I'm gonna to get you started using the channel rack in FL Studio 20. Now because I opened a default project, I started with the kick, clap, hat, and snare that loads automatically. And if I click on any one of those, it opens the sampler. This is where the actual sample is contained. So here's my kick sample which I can preview by clicking on the waveform. And the sampler has extended controls, time stretching. Here's other menus, just it gives you tons of control over shaping that individual sample. You can drag in new samples if you want to have a different sound. So I've already done that for the kick. I found this filtered kick. But if I wanted to get a different hat sound, select hat. That's what I have currently. I can go to hats here preview as many as I want until I find one I like, drag it over, there you go. Now once you've picked sounds, you're going to be ready to record, and there's a few ways to do that. Of course, you can have record enabled, have your click, pick a metronome setting, press spacebar, and start playing these sounds on your MIDI controller, but you're probably going to want to use the step sequencer too, which is a really nice tool, which you can toggle on and off here. So this view is like, you know, a piano roll that you'd see in a lot of DAWs where you can draw in notes. And that is where you would see your MIDI performance if you recorded. I'll go ahead and undo that. But we're going to use the step sequencer. So now we've got that on. And you can see I've got 16 steps. You can really think of each group of four as a beat. So we've got a 4-4 four, four measure. Uh, so for example, I could put a kick on each beat, put a clap on two and four, take that one away, secondary click. If I make any mistakes, I can always just secondary click and drag. So if I do that, secondary click, boom, now they're all gone, but clap on two and four. Now a really nice tool, if I secondary click on the hat, I can see fill each step. I can do two steps, four, eight. So if I do fill two steps, that's gonna give me like an eighth note pattern on the hat. So here's my pattern. and I can tweak it, do whatever I want with it. Once I've got it, of course, I can grab it over here and drag it into my arrangement. And then when I go to song, instead of pattern, now I'm gonna play in my arrangement over here. Like so. Go ahead and delete that, go back to pattern mode. Now, what if I want to add a new instrument, a new sound, or another plugin, maybe a third party plugin? Well, I can, of course, go to any of these ones that I have and just delete them here. And it'll ask if I want to, and there you go. But I'm going to bring it back, undo. But what I want to do is press the plus down here, which opens up all of the plugins that I have available. These are the FL native plugins. So you have Boobase, FL Keys, uh, SliceX, that's a really great one. So you can select, of course, any of those, but I can also go to more plugins up at the top. And now I have a full list of all my third-party plugins, all the other VSTs and things I have downloaded to my computer. You can access that in your side menu over here as well. If I get out of that menu, here is all my plugins. Here's a lot of my mixing and mastering plugins. But back here in the plus, now I have those. So say I wanted to pick, uh, let's see, where's my profit, my arteria? There we go. So it's gonna load up. And now I have that. Now I can play my synth. So we've picked some sounds, we've recorded some patterns using the step sequencer and our MIDI controller. Maybe we go in and rename some of our patterns. That's chorus, let's say. But now I wanna bring your attention to this list of numbers here. What are these? These are target mixer track numbers. So this is actually showing you which channel in your mixer you're sending each sound. So automatically it's set in numerical order. Kick's going to one. Clap to two, hat to three, so on and so forth. But you can see that the synthesizer doesn't have a selection, so I can click and drag and go to five, or of course any channel that I want to, 
Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do five because that makes sense. And you can see there we go. It's highlighted. I'm also going to secondary click and make sure initialize song with this position is selected so that I know the profit will stay going to channel five only. And now I can open it up now that I've got it selected and you will see that sound coming into channel five. Another really important tool is the graph editor. Now I've got that open and it allows me to do things like change individual notes within my pattern. So I'm changing the pitch essentially of that hat sample <laughs> by moving those MIDI notes around. Um, I can change the velocity. So say I wanted the hat pattern to have an accent on the strong beats. I could drag the off beats down. So I get an accent pattern going. And this works really well for melodic instruments too, not just rhythm. So if I switch back to my piano roll view, record something quick with the Prophet. So now I've got that part. If I open that up, of course I can see it in the full piano editor here and I can do all the same things, change velocity, change the MIDI notes. But if I want a quicker view, I can just turn graph on and look, now I've got the exact same control. So I'm affecting the velocity there. And just look how easy that is. And I can draw it in. I can just hold down and draw in different shapes. I can do the same thing with the notes. <laughs> that was completely by accident, but that turned out kind of cool. Another important thing to know is you can drag the channel rack larger by dragging the bottom right corner. And if I want to change the duration of my sequence, of my pattern, um, all I need to do is click in one of these empty spaces and it's going to automatically change the duration. But I can also do it here by clicking and dragging and changing the length like so. Next to that, you also have swing, which I can go from 0 to 100%, which will add swing to your pattern. Also, over in Patterns, you have two other options here. You have Patterns, then you also have your Audio Clips and your Automation Clips. If you add any Audio Clips, maybe you have some samples you want to use, some different audio you're going to manipulate in your song. I could go grab something. Maybe I want to grab a vocal thing. If I drag that over into Audio, which I'll probably want to use in my project at some point, which I'll drag it in like that. So now in the channel rack, I have a new category I can use, audio, which is gonna show me just the audio that I've added. So if I go find a few more, it's gonna create a new item every time I drop in a new audio clip, which I can then send wherever I want in the mixer, just like my other instruments. So I can look just at my audio, or I can do all, and now I can see everything that's in my instrument rack. Next to the target mixer track for all of my sounds and instruments, you get channel volume and pan, so I can adjust those there. I can also toggle each sound or instrument or audio clip on and off with this mute solo button. And that's it. Hopefully that gets you started with the channel rack in FL Studio 20. If you've got any questions, remember to put those below. Remember to like, subscribe, click here for more videos like this, and go to sweetwater.com for all of your music instrument and pro audio needs.